welcome to this Easter reflection, which I've called true or false for reasons that will become really clear in just a second or two. I'm going to start with five points. Uh, they're all quite brief and they're interconnected. And uh, you might even want to listen to them more than once to get the, the flow of the argument and the logic. So point number one, Christianity is either true or false. Point number two, either Jesus Christ rose from the dead or he did not rise from the dead. He cannot have risen from the dead a bit. And was if he didn't rise from the dead, then somewhere in or around Jerusalem by the bones of Jesus of Nazareth. If Jesus Christ did not rise from the dead, then Christianity is false. And you're wasting your time listening to this reflection, and I'm wasting my time talking to you. Four, but if Jesus Christ did indeed rise from the dead, then Christianity is true. And that truth is the most important truth in the universe. Point number five. Christianity cannot be a little bit important. Either it's a complete waste of time or else it's the most important truth in the universe. And of course, that hinges on whether or not Jesus Christ rose from the dead. I'm going to read from John's Gospel from an eyewitness to the empty tomb and see what persuaded two men that Jesus had in, did indeed rise from the dead. From John chapter 20. Early on Sunday morning, while it was still dark, Mary Magdalene came to the tomb and found that the stone had been rolled away from the entrance. She ran and found Simon Peter and the other disciple, the one whom Jesus loved. She said, they have taken the Lord's body out of the tomb and we don't know where they have put him. So let's pause the reading for a second and just think about um, what Mary's seen and what she says. So Mary comes back to uh, Peter and the other disciple who we know to be John, the, the person who's writing this account. And she gives them a piece of eyewitness evidence, an empty tomb with the stone rolled away, and a hypothesis or a theory about the reason for that. And, and notice that, you know, Mary hasn't uh, jumped to the conclusion that Jesus had rise from the dead. No, she thinks his body has been stolen. She thinks the authorities have made off with the body. And so um, Peter and John set off running to the grave to see for themselves with those two things buzzing around in their heads. That is a, an eyewitness fact, an empty tomb, and a theory or a hypothesis about what's caused it, namely the body's been stolen. So we're back at verse three. Peter and the other disciple started out for the tomb. They were both running, but the other disciple outran Peter and reached the tomb first. He stooped and looked in and saw the linen wrappings lying there, but he didn't go in. Then Simon Peter arrived and went inside. He also noticed the linen wrappings lying there, while the cloth that had covered Jesus' head was folded up and lying apart from the other wrappings. Then the disciple who had reached the tomb first also went in, and he saw and believed. For until then, they still hadn't understood the scriptures that said that Jesus must rise from the dead. Then they went home. So the question I'm going to ask is, well, why, why did Peter and John not believe Mary's hypothesis? After all, uh, they confirmed the same fact, the empty tomb and the st stone rolled away. Why didn't they believe her hypothesis that the grave had been robbed and the authorities had taken the body away. There are probably at least three reasons for that. I think the first reason was, maybe in the short term of running, hit them all, why on earth would the authorities want to steal the body? Their interests lay in keeping the body exactly where it was and they'd set a guard to ensure that that would happen. So they had no motive. And in fact, all their motivation lay in the opposite direction. But secondly, and this is 
clearly important in their thinking because it gets quite a mention in that short account. It was the linen wrappings, the cloths that had wrapped Jesus' body um, laid on one side. Now, why does that matter to them? Why was that significant for them, do you think? Well, I think we can probably imagine that if someone broke into a grave in order to steal the body and found a naked corpse, they might wrap it in something, a blanket or a tarpaulin or whatever, in order to make it easier to carry and bluntly not to have contact with dead human flesh. But no no grave robber in their minds would spend time carefully unwrapping a wrapped corpse in order to take away a naked piece of meat. It made no sense whatsoever. And then thirdly, there was maybe a a penny dropping moment, a moment when suddenly all the things that Jesus had done and said made sense in the light of the resurrection. The thing fitted together like a jigsaw, the final piece uh, was in place. Let's pray. Father, we want to build our lives on the truth and not on a lie. And so if it is indeed true that Jesus rose from the dead and is alive today, may that truth do for us what it did for Peter and John. May it change our lives completely. Thank you, Father. Amen. Happy Easter.